What is up, my people? My name is Arnold, aka Vita Fita Mina. Uh, welcome, welcome to this live session. And yesterday, I got an awesome question: How did I start with Capoeira? I wanted to answer that and all the ins and outs. You know, maybe you've just started with Capoeira. I don't know. Maybe you want to start. Maybe you started off beat. Maybe you started really well. Maybe you have some questions. If you have questions about capoeira, starting capoeira, um, you know, schools, uh, training, anything, drop them, okay? Drop, drop them. How did I start capoeira? Well, I started in Groningen. It's a Dutch uh, city uh, in the northern part of Holland. And um, I actually saw capoeira on television. It was uh, Eurosport. I was into martial arts uh, back then, and um, I, yeah, I I saw the end the end show that was capoeira, right? So I saw all this kung fu, wushu, and then uh, capoeira. I remember group Grupo Abada had uh, the main the main uh, show the 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 closing show, and then what I saw there it was just wow, so so elegant. So much control, so much uh, roots. I felt the the Africanism in the music, in the you know, I really felt it. And uh, what what was hard for me was that I that I decided um, to become a Chinese kickboxer. Now, I mean, not that I would change in a Chinese. I did a Sun Shao, uh, Sanda, that is a form of Chinese kickboxing. And um, I was training really hard for that, and I wanted to to do that. You know, I wanted to uh, do tournaments and and all that. So I found found it hard. Find it no, found it hard to to directly stop. Even though I felt the capoeira in my whole system, I thought, no, let's. I'm training. I'm focused. So I did that. And uh, but then after a year, imagine just a year. Oh my God, I was stuck in my head so much, man. Uh, but after a year, I, I started and uh, yeah, never quit, you know, uh, never quit it. It was such a good time. Uh, my first teacher was uh, Flores Menzel, uh, a Dutch guy, but really high quality capoeira. Second teacher was Mestre Valu from um, Salvador, Bahia, Mercado Modelo. And my third teacher was uh, Messi Grandão, and also his younger brother, Professor, well, now Contra Messi uh, Baianinho from uh, Grupo Engenho, also Bahia, also Rio de Janeiro. And uh, of course, I learned from many others, but, but like, let, let's say, formal teachers uh, were those three. And um, yeah, it's, it was an awesome ride, and it's still an awesome ride. I feel like this this kid who started Capoeira, you know, in in, in I was I'm now 36. It, it was like um, it was like uh, I was 19. So you know, I was this I was this hardcore trained, uh, full contact fighter. Huh? You know, I'm a really you know nice guy. I'm not a not an aggressive. You know, I wasn't. I'm not the typical fighter. Even though I was good in fighting, huh? um, but the reason that I stopped was that I wanted to do some more, some more with my body. I wanted a uh, physical uh, challenge. So, I mean, physical, technical challenge. So that was, I was actually doubting between uh, Chinese Kung Fu and Capoeira. And Capoeira won. Wow. Thank God for that. Ha. Huh. Yeah, Capoeira. It, it it was an awesome time. I, I but I really had to go, had to let go of that really hardcore training, uh, structured training, because I entered in a group that was not so structured. Even though Flores Menso, Professor Flores Menso was kind, was he he was a good teacher. He knew what he was doing, um, but there wasn't. Um, I didn't have a foundation. Neither with my second group, I, I I had to create my own foundation, um, which I did in like after eight years of capoeira, I decided to practice hole. How about that? 
And then my capoeira went really went forward, went um, exponentially because I, I I created a foundation of moves uh, on which I can build. And having said that, the more organic, dynamic form of learning which I had was also nice, um, but for different reasons. You know, I really felt from Messi Falou, I I felt the 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 roughness, the Capoeira Jihua, spontaneous learning, just some bursts with a lot of energy. It was really raw, you know, like like really hardcore, uh, raw, and and not not so much um, structured in his training and, and teaching. But I felt his his uh, pure energy and um, well, raw pure energy, I would say. And um, he play, he loved to play the drums, and he had specific preferences for the beat and bow. You know, also a bit low pitched, a bit a bit rough, rough. You know, um, yeah. So I had an awesome, awesome time, and and I I I went after four years of training there in Groningen. I went to Brazil, and. Um, that was a bit rough for me coming back because I I did not realize how much um, how much pain I would would give my master uh, Messi Falou um, because I changed groups, you know. And um, I yeah, if you're watching, sorry for this. I well, I think we've spoken about it, but but it's it's. It's painful, you know, because I I wasn't capable of communicating it in a in a in a in a um, in a way that he would understand because I was one of his his advanced uh, students and also dedicated, you know, also dedicated uh, motivational wise, group wise. I was always in the group. I was I was this motivator, you know, and um, I didn't realize that until. I came back and 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 he he didn't want to communicate for, with me for a while, and um, but I knew, and this is the truth, coming. <laughs> I wanted to teach in Capoeira, and on a on a surface, no, not on a surface, on a deeper level, I knew I had to change groups because I wanted to experience a broader, a more solid foundation on which I could. L- I could give my my own um, my own teaching and my own uh, stuff. You know, it was. I felt that the organization was a bit wobbly, and uh, I I didn't I didn't it didn't feel good. So I I consciously I changed because I I wanted to grow also in that aspect of capoeira, not only uh, in my game technical, but but I think I just felt it coming you know that it in the end it wouldn't work and, and uh um but all my respect to Mas Valu because he, he did great things he had a massive massive group here in Holland and uh, I learned a lot but you know sometimes it is time to to move on you know to move on to a different group uh even though I know that 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 switching groups in capoeira and, and Brazilian culture is not popular and I understand and I would not recommend it unless you have a reason that comes from within, you know? Um, like, if you really feel and thought about it and, and uh, communicated about it with your teachers and, and with your people, and um, then, then I think changing groups can, can, can be fine mm, because we all have to learn from different people. And um, it depends on you, right? It depends on you. In my case... Uh, because I was, I'm a leader in my own way, and I knew I had, uh, I I needed a different platform. I needed a different platform, uh, but I have a massive start. So that's the topic. Let Let's go back to the topic. Yeah, if you want to say, uh, if you want to shout out, you just shout out. I just uh, three people watching. That's good. That's good. My life has changed. Three people watching in the house. <laughs> yeah, awesome. After this, after this, I will try to to record a live session training. Yo, pa, Enma, what up? What is up? After this live session, 
I want to record a live session uh, training. So I try to, to, to install all my stuff outside. So if you have time, also after this, after all this talking, I will go, uh, I try to go live on, um, and uh, teach you, just teach the class. Yeah. So it will be 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And, um, yeah, let's, let's see how, if, if that works. If that works, then you're gonna, then we're gonna, you will grow. I will grow cause, cause I love to teach. So then you're my new life student. What up, Emma? Have you started? When did you start the uh, Capoeira? Just let me know in the comments, yeah? If you don't feel like responding, feel it's all good. I just check it uh, sometimes, yeah? So, starting Capoeira. Yeah. I think starting. I think starting is most important. Um, when, when you have a rough start, maybe it doesn't, uh, you don't have a teacher, you only watch YouTube videos, <laughs> or you don't, you don't have a group, or you... You know, maybe you had a rough start. I think starting uh, is more important than not starting. So, and this is also the case for me with this live videos with YouTube, pardon me, with YouTube and video making and presenting and, and starting comedy, stand-up comedy and, you know, just, just doing something that you like, that you're scared of, um, that, that, that gets you out of your regular routines, you know, breaks patterns. That's the moment that we grow. And um, I think for many people, capoeira is this, uh, that, because many people get out of their comfort zone. Uh, they have to sing, play music. They learn, stand in a circle, present, and learn a language and, and uh, all that. Ah, two years ago. That's awesome. Okay. So how was your start? Did, did you... Do you uh, do you feel that that you have um, yeah had a good start and, and and you're still in your vibe your good vibe or what? Yeah, I I started great uh, to be honest. My first year was great, uh, and then uh, Flores after one year Flores left left our teaching group uh, and uh, without communication, so. I know that Professor Espiritu, if you watch this video, shout out to you and uh, Jinga da Alma. He is running the big group now there. So that's awesome. That's, that's my home, hometown, my home group still. And um, um, yeah, what I did, I just called my uh, a, a Kung Fu relation, right? Uh, and asked for a Capoeira teacher because I didn't know Capoeira teacher. And uh, he knew uh, Messi Valu. And that's how Mazifalu came to our city because I called, and uh, that was amazing. And we were really happy that we we could do Capoeira again, you know. And that's, I think that's that's already the um, bit of the the leading part of me, right? That that just um, some most people were devastated that we didn't have a teacher. Uh, we had a solid group, you know, many I think twenty five people or something, and. Um, yeah, bam, no teacher. So then I stood up and called. And, and, and thinking back, uh, that was one of the, um, yeah, good, nicest things I did for Capoeira. <laughs> wow, that was, we were happy to have a, to have a teacher, um, to have a teacher back. So yeah, I'm just reading, uh, for those who are not reading comments, uh, just read in my uh, reaction. So uh, you say, I have a rough start, I think, because when you started, it's hard. You have to learn some new stuff, movements, capoeira tech, the movie body in a different way. Yeah, I think in my that's that's when you start capoeira. In many ways, uh, unless you're from an African tribe or Brazilian tribe, even I think for Brazilian to start capoeira, uh, you know, it's 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 again a different culture. Uh, but for non-Brazilians, it's quite um, it can be quite a shock, and. Um, yeah, so I think awesome that you that you still that you still do it. Should I call you Inma? Is that your real name? How how shall I uh, how shall I call you? Just uh, type it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My my real name is Arnold. I I, I, I in Capoeira my name is Vitamina or Vita. Most people call me Vita in the Capoeira world. Um, Arnold is fine as well. Vitamina or the guy uh, 
talking is fine as well. <laughs> yeah, so so starting Cup Vietnam, uh, I think the setting is really different. Also the culture, the culture and the um, hierarchy. If you started and you come, you enter with a Brazilian teacher, uh, he brings along uh, awesome Brazilian culture, but also different culture. Well, in my case, right? Because uh, I'm Dutch, I'm used for a, I'm more used to a society where it's more equal. I like equality also in in uh, relationships. <laughs> um, but this this is not the main this is not the main culture in Brazil. Um, my advantage was that I um, that I came from a martial art background, so I I. I'm actually, I was used to that respect for the teacher and uh, just doing what the teacher says. And I was really, um, I was just a fanatic student, you know. I just absorbed everything what, the student, what, what, what my teacher uh, gave me. And um, yeah, I really, floor, I just, I was dedicated. I was, <laughs> oh my God, I was a machine back then. Now I kind of chilled out, and uh, you know, I, I I think it's good it's good um, to have a Brazilian teacher because he can bring the Brazilian uh, culture, which is a big part of Capoeira, of course. Um, now, from my perspective, from now, I I also think I also have noticed the the downside of hierarchy of strict following culture. Um, I think when uh, when it has a when it has an objective, like let's say the bateria. First we play this, then we play this, then we play that. That's part of the culture. It's part of the musical uh, arrangement, and I think that makes sense because then you can listen to the person before you and build up the music, and then the leading person can also uh, hear and correct other people that, that are not feeling the vibe, and then you can build up an energy. Um, let's talk about this culture thing uh, later, yeah, because I, I think it's important, but it's not holy for me, not anymore. <coughs> um, yeah, in my your, your real name, a.k.a. it's, uh, it's Bochecha. What, what does it mean, Bochecha? Bochecha, is it that, that's a Brazilian, right? You were so fascinating with this art, I think. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, thank you. I uh, I do my best, you know. I I'm doing it now for uh, I think 16 years, and my biggest thing is is to share what I got. You know, it's it's. Uh, I'm really humbled and and honored that that you guys follow me because I just do my simple thing. You know, for me, yeah. Even this that we are communicating now, that's. That's the bomb, you know, having you to listen. Um, yeah, so I'm really grateful for that. I, I, uh, I just share what I have and uh, also share my, you know, my process. I, I'm, I'm, I'm training. I try to learn new moves just like you. So I really think, like, depending on, well, not depending, uh, it doesn't mean no. <laughs> Sorry, English. Um, independent on how long you did capoeira, I believe we all learn. <clears throat> um, we can all learn things from each other, from people who started capoeira and who give feedback from more advanced people. Uh, but if a more advanced plays with a person who started, it's this person because. He or she doesn't know all the all the ins and outs may surprise him as well. So I think we can always learn from each other, right? And uh, yeah, I think that's the best. Now I'm still learning. I'm still for me, Capoeira is still a mindset, still a mind game. Even though I'm I'm preparing myself physically and musically, and you know, end of this month I have an event. I'll, I'll definitely show you guys. Um, but um, it's a mind game, and um, yeah, for me, I, Capoeira is teaching me so much. You know, it's it's really 
I'm really grateful for this and uh, yeah awesomeness i i uh, i really like uh, i really like uh, to um to teach you guys hey eh? so inma how about are you ready for a class let me check then then we can check out if if this will work okay if you're ready i can set up my uh, my camera and all my stuff to give you a live cup with a class yeah how's your situation can you can you do that in uh, let's say 10 minutes if you respond, I'll I'll um, I'll prepare it. Yeah. Uh, either way, I will prepare it. Um, did I cover all about starting capoeira? Ah. Yeah. So in my you you had a rough start with your um with your starting. You know what? I think the best time. Cheek. Oh, that's awesome. Puchecha. Okay. Cool. Cheek. You have nice cheeks, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> um, I think with with uh, starting something new, it's really important for all of us to realize that it is something new. So in the beginning, it will be awkward. It will mm, feel, you know, it, it's, it's intimidating. Uh, maybe you feel some... You get ashamed of yourself sometimes, of uh, you're not you're not sure what to do, and you see all the people doing that. I think that is also something. Uh, I will talk about this in another video, but to compare yourself with yourself, I think that's important, especially in capoeira, because there's almost always people far greater than you. There's people way more technical than I am. People that speak way better and nicer in front of the camera. People who, you know, have YouTube capoeira channels that are just booming, you know. And that's fine. My, my challenge is, though, to, to focus on what I want, to focus on how I can grow. So think about that. Uh, think about that um, in my uh, buchacha. Bu buchacha, sorry. <coughs> um, you know, what, what can you do to improve you? And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter uh, what the others do. Use uh, other people's examples as, as, um, as inspiration. But don't, don't do like I did. I spent like so, so much time watching Capodistas online on YouTube. And, um, and, Without training myself, now I know I gotta back to gotta go back to my training. I want to train because I feel great afterwards and during. And uh, yeah, that's it. Just enjoy, connect with people. So I think it's awesome that you connect through here. Um, but have have your own training routines. Have your own focus. What do you like? What do you, which movement? Which a toki? Which song? Know that that's your that's your foundation, you know. To explore what you like, what you think, and uh, and do this for yourself. Do cup weather for yourself. Um, even though it's nice to show off sometimes, uh, but yeah, it's 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 important you practice for yourself. Opa, Adriano, que pasa? Ah, that's Spanish. Eu falo um pouco de português. Não sei se se a gente aqui no canal fala. Maioria da não, eu acho. Mas vamos falar inglês. Se quiser, vou falar português também. Ok, that was a bit of português. Um, escrito no português, se quiser, ok? Or English, whatever. Or Chinese, we can do Chinese. Or, or Japanese, or uh, what else? Uh, Greek, Greek, Greek. Can we speak Greek? I don't know. I don't know anything in Greek. Um, yeah, so uh, that's awesome. You you started this year, uh, Adriano. That's uh, that's great. Um, so how how have how has it been, like so far? Why, uh, which group are you teaching? Are you uh, training with? What is your group? What is your group, mate? That's my best. Uh, no, shall I do an uh, Australian accent? What's your group, mate? Can you do capoeira? Capo. When I was in Australia, they, they said, ah, 
All right, Mike, shall we go to Capo? Shall we do that or not? Shall we go Capo? Capoeira. Ah, <coughs> uh, yeah, then just write in Portuguese. It's fine. I'll, I'll translate for the people, yeah? Cool. So, so how did you start? Where do you train? Yeah, it's a lot of, it's a lot of cool things. So Adriano, let's, let's chat a bit. Are you, Adriano, are you ready for, um, for a Capoeira class when I will teach a Capoeira class live? People are watching now. Just, just let me know, yeah? Let me know if I, I, I have um, Sururu. Okay, cool, cool. I don't know him. Uh, Japanese, real. <laughs> yeah. I know a Japanese song. Saita, Saita. Churipu no anaga, naranda, naranda, akashiro iro, tono ana mitemo, chirei dana. That's it. That's it, my, uh, that's, that's my Japanese. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what's the name of your group, uh, Adriano? <coughs> you see? Now, now I started singing, someone left this conversation and thought, now talk about capoeira, starting capoeira. Yeah, well, I was just a bit off track. So, the starting. I was, I was finalizing this live uh, thing, right? Barba, that's the name of the group? Okay, I'll check it out. Just, just link, some, uh, link some videos if you like, you know? They just... just uh, Reman, oh, that's a big name. Remanes, how do I say that? I can't even pronounce it. Hemanesenches, Hemanesenches, Hemanesenches. Adriano, what, what does it mean? Does it have a meaning? I don't know this. Cool. Well, if you like, just, just link, up, uh, link up your groups, you know, uh, just a video so I can check it out. People can check it out. Um, also good for me to, to understand where you come from, what, what kind of style you train, you know, so that's, that's good. Um, when, I, when I teach, I, I teach regardless of style. I can teach hardcore Hezhenau and Angola. Uh, it only depends on the people if, if they want to be taught, if they want to be taught with principles and more like a holistic view on capoeira, right? For me, you can hold your jinga here, here, here. It can be all perfect. It depends how you train, <coughs> what you do, um, and what your style is, where you are, and mostly in the moment where you, uh, how the game is and what the distance is, you know? So for me, all this like fixed black, white kind of uh, thinking, for me, I think it's relative. I think my, my, my favorite answer for questions in Capoeira, playing, my techniques, this, yes, no, it depends. It all depends. It depends on, on the situation. It depends on the game. It depends on the vibe. It depends on the music, you know? So I could all answer all the question on uh, with uh, it depends. Yeah. It's like those who last from the beginning. Oh, wow. That's, ah, yeah. Ah, that's awesome. Hem, hem on the sense. So that's, uh, that's awesome. Ah, just showing off my bicep. I did some uh, easy, uh, easy workout today just because I was too tired for capoeira. And then strength training is easy for me. Now I'll do some, tr I'll do some capoeira. Yeah? I think my family will come, uh, come back in a second. So uh, Adriano, let's, let's talk later. Yeah? What, what I'll do now, I try to set up my, my live stream for a capoeira class. Yeah? So I'm about to, I'm about to stop this. Um, and then... And then I will, uh, I will teach capoeira, do a warm-up. I focus on uh, Coluna. So I focus on my back flexibility, do some bridges, also shoulder exercises and um, basic legs and, uh, legs and kicks. That, that, that'll be my training, yeah? So uh, join this. It will be, if you're a beginner, you can join. I'll give you some more options if you feel like. And in between, I'll check your questions, yeah? <coughs> okay, give me um, give me ten minutes to set set this up. Yeah, stay tuned. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing. You see, I need to stop talking. All right, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for this live session. I had a blast, and um, 
see you in 10 minutes, yeah, I'll set it up. Uh, if it doesn't work for my laptop, I'll set up my, my mobile phone. Easy, does it. What's the most difficult time of movement for, for you? What, what do you mean, uh, Todor? Uh, what's the most difficult time of movement for you? Uh, you mean, what's the most difficult time for me to train? Or what is the most difficult movement for me to do? Sorry, I don't understand your question exactly. Um, what's the most difficult time of movement for you? Uh, yeah, movement. Movement. So I mean, what's the most difficult movement for me to do? Uh, difficult movement for me to do? Ah, um, well, now any new movement, you know, it's, it's, um, uh, let's, okay, I'll, I'll answer your question, yeah, because I think it's a cool question. Um, <laughs> the real answer is, it depends. So now, for example, I challenge myself to <coughs> to learn new moves, right? Um, because I feel that I grow. <coughs> so a really low Auji Coluna, I didn't do yet. I could do it a couple of years ago with my really like my feet like real, with my back bended like this Auji Coluna, you know, the awesome style kind of thing. So that's hard for me. Uh, but physically, I know I can. It's just I have to connect my body with my mind and uh, go through my fears. Uh, last week, the hardest move was the heva sau on the left side. I had it back on the right side. Um, but then I thought, hey, let's. I'm strong enough. I can do it on the left side, right? And uh, then I, I, I just noticed that I, I couldn't. I didn't know how to place my hands. I didn't know how to kick up my leg. And uh, it was really weird. So what I did then, I would just place my, my hands on the floor and I just threw my, threw my leg up a bit uh, and that's it. And then the only thing that was left there was not knowing. So I had to jump in this black hole of, of nothing, of fear of not knowing, not knowing how to land, not feeling what I should do. And then I just did it. I just threw myself in there. So what I noticed in this uh, training of like last week or the week before, I think 10 days ago, was uh, check the Aoji Koluna video, yeah? How, how did I train Aoji Koluna? It was uh, in the same, no, it was the evening when I was in the Hague Forest. So when I did the, um, whatever. I would, how I trained Aoji Koluna. So it's just not when I don't feel a movement, when I don't feel a movement uh, and having the memory of something, that's the hardest because you have to create a uh, body memory, right? <coughs> and that's weird because it's like doing something completely new. And that's the cool thing. And how I do this is then is build, build myself up. I just build my body up. And then there will, will be certain moments. Um, there will be a certain moment that you're just ready physically, mentally, and then do it. Repetition. Back in the day, the Auji Costa was hard. Like you have to go like this, right? <coughs> Sorry, guys. So soon I'll make a video for this. Uh, Rico also asked for this. So I'll make um, make a uh, um, tutorial for this, yeah, because it's uh, it's an awesome move. But that's also like if you have to bend like this, it's just scary, man. You just gotta do it. You just it's just scary stuff. So um, ah uh, yeah. Did you see? Did you see my video though? Because I uh, helicopter, out of Coluna. Yeah, I did that. Have you seen my video? I'm not sure if I posted it, but I did that. Okay, yeah. So 
Oh, you you say you you would try this? Yeah, man, I'll fix up these both both movements and I'll throw in throw in an awesome awesome combination. You know, the the trick with that combination is the movement of the the hands, right? So first you do the Aoji Kuluna, then you um, no first you do the helicoptero, and then you placement of your body, placement of your hand that will get you the Kuluna. That's the trick. So focus on the hand moves there, yeah. Ah, my my name or my group. Well, in my uh, thanks for your question. It's um, my my group. Well, I have a telephone call, but this is more important. Uh, the name of my group is Brinca de Energy Capoeira uh, Den Haag, and it's my own group. So I started that group. You can uh, you can check out my website, even though. I need to fix it, but it's still online. Capoeira Den Haag. That's uh, that's my site. Um, so in 2011, I changed. I I I went for myself because I had. It was again a, a way of uh, growing. I needed to do my own thing. I had this teaching method, which is now Kapu Flow, right? Kapu training, Kapu yoga, Kapu everything. And um, I had to do it, and I needed space, literally, for myself. So, yeah, for me, it was a good choice to to go on my own. Um, you know, some ways it has advantages, some ways it doesn't. But I try to I try to get to know myself and try to go try to yeah learn who I am. And uh, I learned capoeira. I, I use capoeira as a tool, and. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's what I did. So it's it's uh, brincadeira because I love to play, right? Playfulness. G uh, Capoeira Den Haag. Den Haag is the name of the city where I live in. Before I trained with Capoeira in Genio. All right, uh, Todor. I will try to set up set up a, a a live Capoeira class. Yeah. So I'll stop this live session, and um, I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Yeah, let's say ten minutes. Okay. See you guys. Ciao.